thrilled to have here back on this Rich Eisen Show studio set the star of the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare available in theaters nationwide this Friday, April 19th. We just saw a clip of it. Henry Cavill is here on the program. Uh, great again to have you back here, brother. Thanks for coming. Great to be here. Thank it you is a me. great movie. This is a fun fun movie um, of serious subject matter, actually. Yeah. Um, that act this is a, a based on true events film. Guy Ritchie directing it, you, and a terrific cast in it. Uh, I'll give you the floor on describing uh, to the best uh, what, what this film is, in fact, about, sir. Sir, yeah. uh, this is about the, the first mission that gave birth to deniable operations. Um, hence the name, Ungentlemanly Warfare. During World War II, we were still uh, very much, not very much actually, uh, there was still the, the sense of carrying out warfare in a certain way. And the Special Operations Executive, which is what that team is, mm -hmm. uh, they um, were skulking around in the background, essentially, um, carrying out these kind of missions. This one in particular was so important because it shut down the Nazi U-boat operations in the Atlantic, U-boats being submarines. And um, when they shut that down, that meant the Americans who joined the war, which, as we all know, you guys won the war, basically. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, it helped turn the tide. You can put it yes. that way. It, helped, it certainly helped turn the tide. And, you know, the German U-boats were dominating the Atlantic, which Absolutely. was cutting, uh, cutting uh, the United Kingdom off from the rest yeah. of the continent, the rest of the world. And Absolutely. obviously Hitler, began, Hitler was beginning to bomb the crap out of London, and things were looking pretty dire. Yeah. And this was a crucial mission that actually happened. It's, this is a, a real-life mission. Now, keep in mind, uh, as much as this actually did happen, and was key in changing the course of the war. This is the Guy Ritchie version of how things happen. <laughs> so uh, I do believe, and I may be wrong, but I do believe not a single shot was fired in anger. Is that right? And as you know, yes, that's having... quite different in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's shots of guns and uh, actual bow and arrow, which Alan Richson, uh, I think, kills about uh, 50 people on his own with a, with a bow and arrow in this film. Alan is very handy. Um, oh. With axes, with with knives, with bow and arrows. Oh my anything. goodness! He can. He, he's even handy with Nazis killing Nazis. No. <laughs> he can kill a Nazi with a Nazi, which is quite impressive. That was, and 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 I imagine there there might have been a very little witty repartee in the real life as well, as opposed to this film, which is highly entertaining. It truly is from beginning to end, and it goes in about five minutes time. It oh, really does. Good. Thank you so much. We, we enjoyed making it. Yeah, and it looks like it. it. Looks like you did. And I was telling you before, and I'll say it here again. The, there's a dirty dozen feel to it. Yeah. There's an inglorious bastards feel to it, and there's a a guy Ritchie feel to this film. Yeah. Put it all together, and you you come up with the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. And um, again, the cast is fantastic. Carrie Elwes in this film is uh, is is brilliant. Carrie's the best. And yeah, we love Carrie. Yeah. For sure, and uh, so you and Alan Richson uh, together, um, you know, is there was there like a, a workout regimen that uh, the two of you would go through here? Uh, no, no, I, I I wouldn't dare try to keep up keep up with Alan. Um, what I did enjoy in particular yes. about working with Alan, aside from the fact that he's uh, a marvelous chap, uh, very talented, mm -hmm. and just wonderful to be around, yes. is that I got to hand off all of the action to him. I didn't have to do any really complicated choreographed action, which was a wonderful break for me. Yeah, and I enjoyed that enormously. Well, and Alan was always saying, "Hey, uh, do you want to, you know, do you want to uh, do this one?" I was like, "Please, no." He's like, "Okay, yeah, I'll take it." I think one of the last times you were here, you were you were um, promoting the mission film. Yeah, and you said that fight scene with with Tom Cruise in the bathroom took yeah. how long for you to shoot that? I think it was we four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so it makes yeah. sense that you and plus you were you you wanted to do a lot of your own stunts as well. Absolutely. I think you, you kind of got that thrill ride aspect of your career <laughs> out of your hey, system. I'd imagine. I'm I'm still very much into it. Okay, I mean, we have we have Highlander coming up as well. So, okay, uh, there'll be plenty in there. Okay, but it's nice from time to time just to do just the acting bit of it <laughs> rather than the acting and the fighting. And I enjoyed it. And it certainly, uh, like I said, it, it worked out for sure. And um, I got Henry Cavill here on The Rich Eisen Show. Uh, let's talk a little bit of sports. Uh, you were at an event um, commonly known as the Super Bowl, oh. correct? 
I hope so. Okay, very good. Yeah. Um, you were at the Super Bowl, is another yes. way for me to just say. The most recent one in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes, indeed. Because uh, you are a fan of the... Um, I, I'm a fan of the Chiefs. Yes, indeed. Um, important to note, Prima Homes. Yes. Just so I'm not right. sort of one of those Brits who came over and chose the best team. <laughs> yeah. uh, which is, again, uh, probably a controversial thing to say. Sorry, folks. That's no, no, quite all right. It's uh, quite all right. Speaking of the best team as well, I uh, had a wonderful time because Apple very generously invited me to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And Apple being where Apple is, yes. obviously 49ers fans. Mm-hmm. Um, and they felt so poorly for me. And I think also we went in being the underdogs for that as well. Which is crazy, by the way. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, it, it, it's it's nuts how many people thought the Chiefs were not going to flip a switch and things of that nature. Yeah. And, and to be honest, up until half time, there was some concerns. Yes, indeed. Uh, but Apple felt so bad for me. They actually had one of their guys support the Chiefs with me and Natalie. And they said, yeah, you know, you know yeah, yeah, you, you jump in there and, and just make them feel comfortable. What is designated consoler? Is that what you're uh, saying? Anyway, this, this, this gentleman, he was, uh, he had supported Chiefs in the past and, okay. and he wasn't really sort of in one camp or the other. And so he said, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll go for it. I'm, I'm, I'm always about the underdogs and about the franchise and let's, let's do it. And so... Everyone was quite vocal to begin with, mm-hmm. especially sort of in the Apple box and and, and being very pro, not Chiefs. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, okay, yeah, let's let's step up and let's be just as vocal back. Of course, I didn't get the memo that I should be less vocal when we started smashing them in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so hopefully one day I will be invited back. <laughs> well, but the chances I, are low because it, it, it's it, all bets are off, though, right? It's when you're Super Bowl. exactly, yeah, it, yeah. yeah. It, no, it was all, all in good spirit. All in good spirit. Great. Like, sort of, there was there was some some good natured ribbing going. on. Yeah, I know. When you're out here on the on the on the left coast, you, you look at your you look at your phone, and it's Cupertino time that's on your phone. So clearly, we're we're well aware of where their allegiances might exactly. lie geographically and yeah. and emotionally as well. But, I mean, just rooting for Patrick Mahomes has got to be one of the greatest things of all time, just seeing this guy I mean, do his he thing. he always seems to provide. It's a great thing. It is unbelievable. Yeah. Every single time, it seems. And so, um, just to remind uh, everyone again, why the Chiefs? What what, uh, what turned you on to the Chiefs to begin with? So, uh, being over here, wanting to get into football, mm-hmm. learning that I could actually enjoy the game, because initially I thought it's just a bad version of rugby. <laughs> And what? then I realized it's human chess, essentially. It's, it's, not, it's nothing like rugby. Right. And, and I. Well, the play that the Eagles run on the goal line is, <laughs> is basically rugby. The right. brotherly shove. That's, <laughs> now that's rugby. Right. But outside of that, yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I, I had to pick a team, and I thought, well, what's, what's going to be a constant in my life? What's going to be one thing which will always be. Uh, I'll always have connected to, mm-hmm. I'll always have connection to in one way or another. And it was clearly Superman. And I thought, great. Uh, now who would Superman support? And even though the Chiefs, I, I often hear this, they say, but they're not in Kansas. And they kind of are. They're not, right. but they are. Right. Um, and that's who Clark would have supported. And I figured, it's ideal. I'll, I'll stick with the Chiefs. And then they started winning. Yeah. The so. Kansas City fandom does not stop at the Missouri-Kansas exactly. border. It does spill over to exactly. the other side. Yeah. So that's truly... It's not a hard wall. That's <laughs> truly the one that... That's, that's, and so... Yeah. So what year was this right around the time? Um, where, okay. So it was the year where we lost to the Steelers in the playoffs because I was there. Okay. And... That was a cold, um, that was a cold night, wasn't it? Where, the, where there was like a delay. The game was delayed a little bit too. I or the start of the so. day. It was supposed yeah. to be a day game and then they did have yeah. it at night because it was too damn... Like yeah, there's something I, going on with the I think the that weather. was Mahomes' first game on because their first string was out with an injury, mm-hmm. I believe. Right. And um, I think anyway. Okay. Uh, I don't really remember. It was quite quite the spectacle. Okay. There's a Brit going over there, being down on the sidelines and everything. In and Arrowhead. Just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it is as loud as they say. It, I, no, <laughs> I'll tell you what. The first time I'd ever been to a game at Arrowhead... Um, it was Thanksgiving night in 2006. It was the first ever th- right. Thanksgiving thir- th- uh, Thursday night uh, evening game. Mm-hmm. NFL Network had it, and I'd never been to a game in Kansas City. And uh, my my colleagues, Steve Mariucci, longtime coach in the league, goes, listen, when they do the national anthem, and instead of home of the brave, and they say Chiefs, 
it's going to be the loudest word you've ever heard said. <laughs> and I'm like, is true. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. And it was the loudest word I've ever heard said. And it was, yeah. it just it came out of like a void, right? Because mm -hmm. everyone is just politely waiting. singing and being quiet. <laughs> yeah. when, waiting. Yes, yeah. indeed. You're, you're not wrong. It, yeah. it truly is a special experience. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm a big old Chiefs fan. And then Mahomes gets drafted. No, they just, they're a dynasty. They're yeah. totally dynastic. Yeah, so that's the 2016 wild card. That was it. Uh, yeah, they lost at home to Pittsburgh. Okay. So the year before Mahomes was even drafted. There you so. go. Okay. So the year before. So, yeah, you, you were at you're, an Alex Smith game. In early. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You were there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh! You were in early, so you're I not. Was. You're not. Yeah, you're I'm not, not one a bandwagon jumper. Weather, no, yeah, not at all. No. So who who would who is your 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 other teams? Do you have any other teams like? So um, when it comes to rugby, anything, uh, anything I any sport, obviously England, um, and also Gloucester. Okay, my my club rugby team. Um, Jersey used to have a team. Jersey, where I'm from, the island of Jersey, uh -huh. where I'm originally from. They mm -hmm. no longer have a team, unfortunately. So uh, my local team is Gloucester. Okay. And, support them any uh premier league squad side uh, i anything? have i am still agnostic when it comes to premier league but why is I, that just I, I just never really got into it at a young age okay uh, i seem to find myself a bit more readily available for watching sports at the weekend these days okay i made some more time for it okay. so maybe i'll get into premiership okay yeah. didn't know that okay uh did, have you did you see the beckham documentary did you ever see have you seen I did. it it's very good I thought it was pretty good. Really compelling. Yeah. I'd, I'd never, I didn't, I, I'd forgotten most of that about, about him and how he was birthed into being famous and, and that. It highlighted the era and how difficult it was being a British sporting celebrity and, and obviously married to a massive pop icon as well. My gosh. I mean, it looked uncomfortable, okay. to say the least. I mean, speaking of um, documentaries, yes, have you sir. seen Vinnie Jones's? documentary i have not i've heard it's amazing though oh, it's so worth a watch like if you guys what have a board and need something to watch it, it's beautiful vinnie jones's farm it's a wonderful insight to yeah. uh writing it down yeah I, i'm imagining you have to know vinnie jones if you're going to do a guy Ritchie movie right you have to know as much <laughs> about vinnie jones if you're gonna like is that an en that's like a an entry level guy Ritchie thing watching right? watching this uh movie or uh, this documentary yes taught me that i know nothing about vinnie jones <laughs> until you watch this <laughs> And I, I, I actually, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. He lives out here. I think he's a member of the golf club that I'm a member of. I worked at like, Fox with him for a second. Is he that did right? Some stuff with us he's in the a, early. Yeah. He's an interesting guy. He, uh, he, he seems was, like a really, really nice yeah. dude. Oh, uh, I, I, Henry, I can't. I, like I said, I, I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed this movie that you're in. That everybody's hey, going to start enjoying you. on Friday. It, it, it's just a total blast. And and I again, I did not know the story of how there was a group of of men and and women as yep. well that yep. that turned the tide of the war by Absolutely. by taking on this black opera this black ops yep. um mission in a world where that just doesn't happen yes right it was it was it was a new concept for the time right and one of the the um i guess uh one of one of the people who are in charge, for the lack of a better phrase, mm -hmm. back at the uh, back at the home office was Ian Fleming. Yes, the the Ian Fleming, the Ian Fleming, who turned out to be the guy who created James Bond. Indeed, and the character of James Bond is rumored to be based on the guy you play in this film. Yes, yeah. Now, now Whoa. I'm sure I'm sure Ian Fleming wrote yes. uh, uh, James Bond with a lot of stories and a lot of different characters in mind sure but an amalgam I, i'm sure as i understand it gus march phillips was was one of the stronger influences and in fact gus march phillips is uh they all had code numbers and gus was w01 which is what eventually became 007 yes um over time and they all had these these little code numbers just so they could reference each other and be deniable in their operations uh also gus march phillips i have recently learned and i may be wrong in this too mm -hmm. but i'm fairly sure i'm not was also an amateur author and poet and he had written a book about a spy based upon his adventures as well and had he not died during world war ii he may have beaten ian fleming to the punch that is wild yeah 
That is totally yeah. wild. Again, when I'm well, watching this movie and I heard Ian Fleming's name, I'm like, wait a minute. I actually yeah, yeah, that had, guy. The, well, I had the benefit <laughs> of what people won't have in the theater, which is I racked it back. Right. I'm like, wait a minute. Did yeah. I hear that name right? Yeah. And that, that had me at hello, essentially, to use another phrase from the movies. And Carrie Elwes's character, is that M? Is that yes. from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's M. From Bond. M, M. Yeah. Dame Judi Dench. <laughs> <laughs> Well, eventually, <laughs> yeah. you know, six degrees of Kevin Bacon later, Ooh, you know, yeah. it, it is, it just adds another layer of coolness to this film. And so uh, I, I just want to ask, and hope I'm not putting you in a position, is there, is there any bond in your future still? Is there any possibility of this? I have no and, idea. All I've got to go off is, is the rumors. So is it the same information you have. Right. Um, maybe I'm too old now. Maybe I'm not. We'll see. It's up to, to Barbara Broccoli and Mike Wilson and, um. But we'll see what they, what their plans are. Well, I mean, you're you're, you're playing the guy who Bond is based on. Yeah, seems like a good first step, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm again, I'm I'm just a movie goer, you know. But and and you're outstanding in it. You are outstanding you, in this. And we've had Alan Richson in here before. And by the way, he said he eats pizza. He said he ate pizza the night before yeah, he showed he, up here. No, no chance. What a bunch no, of crap. No, he does. What? No, he does. He's you know he's not kidding. No, he just works really hard. Um, but he's he, he's. Hold on a second. Have you seen Alan Rich and hit craft services during yeah. a, during a break in the uh, action here? I really? Mean, well, that's another thing. We're often eating sort of off the back of Guy's trailer, which has like a little barbecue there. So what? It's what? yeah, yeah. Guy Guy has a thing called a Wild Kitchen. Oh, right. It's a it's check it out. It's it's very very cool. What? It's like an outdoor oh, cooking hold space, on, hold on. sort of barbecue uh, cooking space. Wait, and, is this, what do you mean? We check it out. Like you can buy Guy, yeah, Guy yeah. Ritchie's Wild oh, yeah. Kitchen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It literally yeah, yeah. Yeah. auto populates Guy Ritchie Outdoor Kitchen. Yeah. Like you can buy this sort of thing. Yes, it's featured. Yeah, it's a thing. Cashmere Caveman is the uh, I think the name of the company. Yes. But, oh, oh my goodness. Yes. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, so he, has, he has one of those on the back of his trailer. And then what? So you, and then. Uh, he you, has a uh, chef out there who's who's cooking away, and we have like meat and vegetables all day just off the back of that. Oh, thing. I see. You can actually have a proper meal, is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, a guy is fantastic like that. He really creates an environment on set where you're on tour doing a job. You're a, you're a troop of creatives, rather right. than it being. It doesn't feel like a, a factory floor where you just got to go, 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 go. Everything is uh, as efficiently cheap as possible, so the movie can be made. It's supposed to be a fun experience, and Guy really does make it that. Yeah, I'm telling you, there's like some Indiana Jones in this too, like with the maps and the and and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean, like yeah. the, and 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 World War II and Nazis, obviously. It, it feels like an adventure because I mean, this was these guys sailed yeah. all the way down to just off West Africa in in this Brixton trawler uh, through Nazi waters and survived. The whole thing was an adventure. Uh, it's amazing they made it. Yeah, suicide mission. And the Nazis okay. were out to kill him, and the Brits, if they captured yeah. him, they couldn't say, "Hey, you know, we're one of you." And in fact, it, it, it was after this mission. But Hitler, when he found out about these guys, said, "All, all bets are off. If we capture you, you will be tortured to, uh, in the most horrific of ways." And so it, it, he really did not like these guys. Sounds like Hitler. Yeah. I mean, it does. I mean, it's <laughs> definitely in character for the guy. Oh, my goodness gracious. The film is awesome. Again, it's called The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, available in theaters nationwide this Friday, April 19th. And I imagine the Chiefs have not lost the Super Bowl since you received the script of this film. <laughs> Maybe no, a couple no, years no, ago, right? No, yeah, yeah. A, they, they did a, not lose it. A dynasty has been born, and now we know how. Uh, at Henry Cavill on Instagram as well. Great to see you, sir. Thank you, sir. Please, anytime you've got something great. to promote or you just want to come and hang out. Hey, it's nice hanging out here. I appreciate that. You guys that. have a good environment here. I appreciate nice that. That's back. deserving of a round of applause. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Great to see you. Henry Cavill, again, check out The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, available in theaters nationwide this Friday, April 19th. You will not be disappointed. You will love it. Catch The Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.